Welcome to the Public Voice Salon. We are an open dialogue on education, the arts, and social change. And we are broadcasting today from the Russian Museum in Jersey City. A lot of people don't realize there is a Russian museum right here in Jersey City, New Jersey. And we have Samir with us, who's of Lebanese background, but he's from Canada. He's one of the artists in this international show that was actually curated in Chelsea and they picked seven winners, international artists here in Jersey City coming together at the Russian Museum to showcase their work. And our show is about aesthetics and art and we like to enrich our public dialogue. And so it is such a great honor and pleasure to have you on our show today. And in this vibrant Russian Museum, the place is packed, filled with people looking at art, enjoying the work, making their interpretations, socializing. And you, sir, tell us a little bit about your background in the arts and how did you get interested in art? Uh, well, I'm, I immigrated to Canada when I was 21. So I'm 62 now. You went from Lebanon to Canada when you were 21. Yeah, and I did my first oil painting. I was 13, 13 years of age. What was it of? Uh, it was. It represented actually a sun set on the de on the desert. Oh, the desert. Okay. Yeah. So you grew up in a desert environment. No, no, no. no. I grew up in Lebanon. Uh, uh, across all of all of the grove, the trees. So now I come actually from a town in Lebanon called June, uh, and it's really the, it has a plantation of olive grove that very ancient that goes about 1,000 years ago. See, an olive tree never dies; you can cut it and grows again. So I come from there. I went to Montreal, Canada, and I studied engineering. So yeah, I immigrated in '73. So and I, after my engineering, I have a master degree in telecommunication, and I, I do have some patent also on the internet, kind of. This is one of your paintings behind us. Tell yeah. us about the work. Yeah, this is uh, what we, what we call this, the Walking with Giants. And walking with Giants. This is a series of Walking with Giants. It presents autumn scene from uh, behind my house in Montreal. Oh. It's actually a signature of my work. If you go on my website, samoon.com, you will see not this one, but you see another one. People love this, and I, they sell very fast when I do these things. It's a rendering of the autumn trees, uh, which is really specific to me. And it's, it's really... The particularity of my art is when you... It's actually modern, but it's post-impressionist. It's like modern and postmodern together. Yeah, I'm influenced by mostly by Vincent. And Van Gogh. If you Van Gogh, Starry Night. Well, yeah, nobody goes into that. He just, what we call, killed the subject. He is so genius. So, what we do actually when we are influenced by a, an artist, so we incorporate our feeling into a new thing. So, it's like he was influenced by Millet. You see, and so on. So, what would you tell our audience out there watching us now? People who are creative, who may have a feeling that they want to be uh, a great, that they want, they have something to offer the world in terms of creation. What could you say to our audience out there? Because you had this inside of you. You were working as a mechanical engineer and all the what, which is also creative, also. Yeah. But you wanted to be a painter. That was your great no, passion. I never, I never. How did you become a painter? Then? It just comes by accident. It's it's really something that you love from your childhood, as as I did. Yeah. And then after I finished my engineering, so I bought a an easel and started painting again. And then uh, it came to me uh, to do uh, something happened in my life, and uh, and I needed to do painting. So and. Uh, uh, and when you want to be an artist, if you want to go into this field, you have to create your own style. So, so in other words, it's okay to be influenced by other people. Like you were influenced by Van Gogh. Van Gogh, but yeah. you, you cannot really do 
like Van Gogh. No, yeah, there's yeah. only one Van Gogh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when people see my work, they know they are looking to a Samoan, not a Van Gogh. Right. right. That's that's what uh, where I'm I'm now. That the painting like this behind me. Okay. But I, I also see I also see Monet in there. Am I am I there correct? Monet. Well, I mean, my painting I put them like that, and also critics put them like it's, it's 85 percent Samoan. Yes. Okay. It's 10 percent okay. Van Gogh. Okay. And uh, three percent Monet yeah. and Pissarro. Also, you see, it's okay. actually an importation of things. Imp when I when I was a kid, I wanted to be Elvis. You see, you want to be Elvis. Treat what? me like a fool, Elvis Presley. I wanted to be Elvis, Elvis Presley. Presley yeah. And I, I'm not. I'm never going to be Elvis Presley. Yeah. But I could be a little like Elvis, right? Yeah, of course, okay. of course. All right. But you can, you can do that. But probably a word of because we here we are on education program, right? Yeah, this is education, but we want to be fun. We want. We don't want to be stuffy so about this. for yeah. children's sake, okay. you see, if yeah. they want to be an artist, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they have to have the love for that. Yes. But they have to work hard. Okay. Work, work is work part of it. Is important. Yes. You cannot be an artist, accomplished artist, if you do one painting per year. No. You have to do at least one painting per week. Have you thought of teaching? Uh, I've been asked to teach a lot of time, but I don't have the time to I do that. You could be a wonderful educator, sir, but you are educating. They can, they can, children can write to me on my website, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. and I will answer them. If they You're want. educating our public right now, I want you to know, and we're Thank so lucky so and grateful to have you on our show. Thank you. The colors are, you are beautiful. You are, you are a great interviewer, by the way. Thank you. Now, I want to just say one thing about Montreal. My, my yeah. wife, Claudia, who I love dearly, she's filming us right now. Yeah. Say hello to Claudia. You Hi, are Claudia. invited to Montreal, actually. Thank you. We'll come to your house and of course. Okay. Well, wonderful. It's a deal. It's a deal. Yeah, I'll take you to. Uh, uh, I'll take you to a nice restaurant in Montreal. Okay. I mean. Wonderful. It's, and, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a kind of okay. a European city in North America. That's what they say. Europe. I mean Montreal. Right. Yeah. It's the closest to Europe that you can get in North America. Claudia and I took a train from New York to Montreal a couple when of years did ago. You go? About three, uh, years, three ago. years ago. Wonderful trip up the Hudson River line. Yes. Gorgeous scenery. Look out the window. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful scenery, and it's only about a 10-hour train ride, oh, yeah. and it's like we're in this European so you, city. You actually go through, uh, went through the Adirondack, uh, through the beautiful Adirondack Mountains. You know yeah. what? In 2009, yeah. you see that the Adirondack they run uh, through Lake Champlain, right on the other side. Yeah. And the committee organizing the festivity for the discovery of Lake Champlain by Samuel de Champlain invited me to do 18 painting of the lake. Well, you're talking about Champlain, Lake Champlain. Samuel de Champlain. Ah, we saw that lake as we yeah. went by. It's a beautiful lake. Yeah. So I did 18 painting of the lake. Oh. And the committee, I mean, they, they, they actually traveled me from the north to the south as Champlain did. Wow. Now I want to say... I painted and they were exhibited in Plattsburgh State Art Museum. Oh, that's wonderful. I need to say a word of the yeah. great thanks to the organizer and especially Margot. Yeah, Margot. Who actually, I mean, she does a wonderful job. I mean, all this work. I mean, we were at Chelsea at the uh, International Art Fair. There were people outside, I mean, making the lines and looked at the people tonight. Yes. yes. And, uh, well, right. Thank you, sir. Thank all you the so best. Okay. Waiting for you in Montreal. Thank you. Okay, good. Now we're still at the Russian Museum. We're downstairs now with the lovely Aksana, who we met here, and she is representing one of these brilliant artists who's Russian artist, is that true? Yeah. And you're also from Russia, Ale? Originally, yes. Okay, and uh, say your name again is? Aksana Karni. Aksana Karni, from which part of Russia? St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. What do you think about this incredible art event here in Jersey City? There's so many people up there. You can't even walk, right? You can't even walk. Right, right. It's it's good crowd here, wow. and uh, it shows like many people still interested art, and uh, I am so happy to see so many people came today. It's incredible. It's really very vibrant and vital, and it's very interesting, and there's a lot of colors, and there's art all around us. Right. Now, you're uh, the client. You represent who? Alexander Duder from St. Petersburg. Okay, and these are his works behind us. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the work. Uh, Alexander Duder graduated uh, St. Petersburg Polytechnical Institute, and just three years ago he started to paint suddenly. 
yeah. just for one day. Now he, he his collection is around 500 pictures. My God, he's very prolific. Yeah, it's true. And uh, he paints in uh, many different styles, such like still life, the sea, and uh, oh. uh, abstract, and uh, you know, like uh, sea. So many different styles. He likes the sea. Did he grow up near the sea? No, it doesn't mean he likes the sea. It's just only for pictures are here, but uh, he has many different styles around. So now, uh, okay. 200 his pictures uh, are in a. How old is he? How old is he? He's 52. And when did he start painting? How old was he? Three years ago. That's like my father. My father was 48 years old right. when he first started to paint. My father never studied painting, picked up a paintbrush at the age of 48. Now he's in his early 70s. He has hundreds and hundreds. Mm -hmm. So we like to, there's our audience out there. By the way, you can say hello. There's our camera. Say hello to hello. our audience, okay? <laughs> And we try to inspire our audience to go for their creative dreams too, right. to not be afraid to express themselves yeah, okay. artistically. Do you have any creative interests? Uh, yes, but I think I don't have enough talent. Why well, don't say that. I don't believe that's true. You're very talented. You're a good talker. M maybe, but not in the painting. Maybe. Well, you, we have different talents in different areas of our life. You, you, you represent uh, your... Uh, you say client very well. Yes, yes. So, so I have to know this stuff. Yes. You know, I have to know art right now, and I learned a lot. So I wanted that this guy will be famous someday. The art of publicity. Don't you want to be famous, though? I don't know. I never thought about. She's that. behind the scenes. She's behind the scenes. Okay. So look at that wave up there. What's going on with that ocean wave? That's yeah, a beautiful. It's a wild. Wave. It's a big storm. Okay. It's, it's a storm. Yeah. It's a big storm. Uh huh. I don't know what what's his inspiration, but uh, but his uh, mind works like this. I don't know. You see, this is very calm. Yes. This is like uh, summer. I mean, winter time, and this is abstract. I don't know how his mind works. No oh, idea. Nobody knows how our minds work. Yeah, There's a mystery no of life. Exactly. There's a mystery of art, right? Of human right. cognition, and but the thing is of uh, the the miracle of expression. I think that's important to show our audiences that. Uh, and here we are in Jersey City, New Jersey, of all places. We're not in Manhattan. We're not in the Shishi Art Capital of the world. We're across the river. People like to laugh and say, New Jersey. What are you just like? the Sopranos and all that. No, we okay. are art, we are culture, we are hundreds of people in this gallery from Russian descent. I've never been with so many Russians in one place. It's very interesting, don't you we think? We are a family. A family, <laughs> a family. I feel like I'm in Dr. Zhivago. Remember the movie Dr. Zhivago? Yeah, I remember, but Russian movies much better, I tell you the truth. The Russian movies? What's your favorite Russian? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> What's your favorite Russian movie? My favorite Russian movie? A lot. I have a lot. Mm. One of them. Give me one of them. Tough to tell right now. Jesus. Okay, well, you can think about it. What about literature? Do you like Tolstoy, Dostoevsky? Literature, I have a lot. My favorite writer is Chekhov. Chekhov. Yeah. Wonderful writer. Plays. Beautiful plays. Yes. yes. Thank you for being on our show. You're such Thank a good sport, much. and I wish you well, and uh, good luck, and enjoy the rest of this party. It's a very vibrant party. Thank you very Did much. Did you meet a lot of people today? Sure. Having conversations? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Old friends and new friends. Yes, exactly. Okay. Stay in touch, and always be a friend of our show, okay? Thank you. Okay, okay. Bye. Okay, now we're going to see these chairs that I have always admired at this Russian museum in Jersey City. I always, whenever I walk in the door, my eyes always gravitate toward these chairs. They're so interesting. They're very kind of a retro 1960s, you know, leather aesthetic. It's a very like Jetsons type of thing, you know, Jetsons. So I'm going to, I always wanted to sit in one of these chairs. I'm going to sit in one of these chairs now. Okay. Ah, there we go. Isn't that nice? Wow. Now my friend Andre, who I just met, I'm going to call Andre over. Come on, Andre. Andre is a wonderful creative person here at the Russian Museum. And there's so much going on. It's so much. It's exciting. Uh, I'm so happy to be here at the Russian Museum. Where are you from in, in Russia, Andre? Uh, I lived in Moscow, and now I live in Miami. Okay. And it's so good that the Cold War is over. Aren't you happy? <laughs> yes, I'm happy. Oh <laughs> That's God. good. I hated that. <laughs> That's no problem oh for me. You know, I, 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 I was born in Siberia. <laughs> in Siberia? Woo! It feels like Siberia tonight in New York. No. It's been cold. No, no, no. That's this is so nothing. Strong. Nothing, nothing. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't wear my thermal underwear tonight. And I, I'm, I'm cold outside. I'm very cold. But Andre, I gotta, I'm so happy to be with... Now, when I grew up as a kid, 
I was petrified of Russia. I was so terrified of probably your fathers and grandfathers. I thought you guys were going to wipe us out, you know, nuclear war. We were so afraid. And that, you know, isn't it happy that, let's just celebrate that, okay, that that's all. Were you afraid when you were younger? Well, how old are you, Andre? Oh, now I'm 42. So do you remember the Cold War? Yes, yes I remember because my, my youth was in the USSR. Remember Brezhnev, Brezhnev? Yes. So much nicer now, right? Yes, now it's nicer, good. We have glasnost, we have peace, we have peace in our time. Well, it's good to be here with you on a cold winter night where it feels a little like Siberia, but there's warmth in the room, there's connection, there's conviviality, there's a spirit of fun. Are you having a good time at this uh, art show? Yes, yes, I like it because um, uh, I, I like art. Uh, I, I, oh, sorry, this is my phone, but now well, I... You're a man in demand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I like art, I like artists, and uh, now in the USA I uh, work with um, several artists, and the main of them, Viola and Alexander Tchaikovsky. So you're back and forth between New York and Russia, right? Yeah. Wow. International, sophisticated guy. Yes, yes, international. Wow. Because my authors, my painters, uh, which uh, I present, uh, which I present now, they live in Latvia, in Riga, yeah. Riga, and they work in in Italy, in Milan and Venice. Oh, all international. Wow, <laughs> they are Russian. They are Russians. Live in Latvia, wow. in in Bal near Baltic Sea, and working in Italy, and presents uh, here in the USA. <laughs> I tell you what, why don't we take a look at the paintings now of who, who, whose paintings are we going to look at first? Uh, this is a creative duet, a creative family, Viola and Alexander Tchaikovsky. All right, let's take a look at the paintings, okay, okay let's go. Okay, my new friend Andre here informs me that this, these paintings we're going to look at, they are of a couple. Yeah. Is this a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend? They're husband and wife. Oh, just like me and Claudia. <laughs> Perhaps, I don't know. know. We're a creative couple. Okay. <laughs> Very good. We're, we That's like great. to think our TV show is a work of art. That's great. Okay. Uh, so show us now. Tell us what's behind us, these beautiful abstract paintings. Tell us a little bit about them. Behind us we see uh, three works of Alexander and Viola, Tchaikovsky. Uh, this is a style of uh, abstract expressionism. Who invented that style? Was it, was it uh, Jackson Pollock? Yes, yes. I, th I think Jackson Pollock too. He was an American. Yeah. <laughs> we did something right. right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And we beat you guys to the moon too. <laughs> I'm not going to rub it in. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Jackson Pollock was a New York abstract expressionist yeah. famous for the drip style. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I'm smarter than I think. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, the, f the first work, uh, this is a woman. Yeah. This is the best work for me. I like it. Okay. And the second, if you see uh, carefully, uh, you will see the face. Oh. This is uh, autoritrato, but uh, this is Italian language. But Italian language? This is autoportrait. Okay. Yes, Ita Italy. Italy, Italy. So these Italy. artists, did they go to Italy? Were they influenced by Italian they culture? They work. They work in Italy. They work yeah, in Italy. Is Italy school, yes. Italian school yeah, of art. Yeah. Are they of Russian background, though? As people, are they Russian or are they Italian? Yeah, no, they are Russians. Okay. They are Russians. They live in Riga and work in Italy. Okay. Wow. wow. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very sophisticated. Th okay. This is auto portrait. The name of this picture, auto portrait. Okay. The middle one. If you see carefully. It looks like the letter. L. Huh? It looks like the letter L. L that is the face, yes. That's a face. The, yes. Okay. The name auto portrait. portrait. Author? Author. Author. Okay. Excuse Author me. portrait. Author portrait. Author portrait. Yeah, really. Okay. Really. Yeah. Uh, the, How would you say that in Russian? Uh, Autoportrait. Ah. Uh, <laughs> See that? We want to cultivate our, our audience. We want our audience to, to be multicultural, multilingual, yeah. you know? Isn't that wonderful? You're multilingual. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you're bilingual. And, uh, Russian, Ukrainian a little bit. Ukraine. Yes, so a Ukrainian bit. is a different yes. language? I, live, I lived in Ukraine. So wait a minute. How many dialects are there in Russia? How many different languages are there throughout Russia? In, in Russian languages? Yes. Oh, I 
don't know, maybe 100. 100? <laughs> yeah. So there's no such thing as Russian to speak Russian. You can't say that. You say no, no. All, all, all Russians uh, understand each other. It's no oh, problem. Uh, no. Certain words in common? The different, uh, yeah. the pronunciation. Okay. The, this is the difference, pronunciation. Because Siberian, Moscow, uh, Volga River, ah. and Caspian Sea, and uh, uh, St. Petersburg, okay. this is uh, the same language, but okay. another pronunciation. But that's interesting. So there's different dialects. I grew up, let me tell you, when I was a kid, I had a friends, the Likolai brothers, uh -huh. Matthew and Gregory Likolai. They were my dear, dear childhood friends. If you're watching Matt and Greg, I say hello. Anyway, Matt and Greg had a Russian father mm -hmm. and, a, and a Polish mother. Mm -hmm. They actually met on the World War II battlefield. She was a, a Polish nurse. Mm -hmm. He was a Russian soldier wounded. Yeah. And this is with my childhood friends, you know. So I knew two words of a different language growing up. Uh -huh. I, knew, I knew in Russia the word for no is nyet. Yet. That's the only thing I knew. In oh. Russia was yet. And, but I knew the word in Polish for yes was tak. Tak. So I would say tak and yet. Those were the two. Similar to Ukrainian. Similar to Ukrainian. Yeah, yes. Okay, yes. See that? Yeah. But not Russian. I'm not Russian. Not not Russian. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I, you know, let's take a look at the final painting here, sir. Okay. And uh, my good friend Andre, this is, oh my God. Are you, do you live in Jersey or New York? Uh, I live in Miami now. You're Miami guy. Yeah. My God. I like Miami bed. <laughs> Tonight, can you take us, fly us down? It's yeah. freezing here in New York. Yes, yes. We'll hit the beach. I heard Miami is like a lot of artists are there a lot yes, of pain, yes, that it's drawing it that there's a sense of artistic community in Miami that is superior to that of New York what do you yeah think? yeah uh, there is a big big Miami art district yeah. and if you know Art Basel Miami yeah. the big exhibition Art Basel Miami right scope uh, okay. untitled uh, this okay. is a satellite of Art yeah. Basel uh, in, uh, in 2014, there were uh, big uh, exhibitions. Okay. Uh, I think 10 satellites around yes. Art Basel. Okay. If you know Art Basel, this is a central exhibition, yeah. and right. 10 satellites, Scope Art Miami, Art Design, and others. Wow. And I visited all of them. Everything. Yeah, wow. yeah. Well, we don't want to talk too much about Miami now. We're here in Jersey City. Yeah. The Russian Museum, ladies and gentlemen. This is so multicultural. Claudia and I, we live in Hoboken. We got on the light rail. Do you know the light rail? Yeah. The light yeah. rail. It's a wonderful, it's like a train above ground. It's an electric train, no pollution. We don't believe in pollution. Cars. Unusual for my head, and I understand. We don't believe in cars, okay? <laughs> We're green energy people, okay? We took the light rail from Hoboken. We're so enjoying ourselves with you and your countrymen, and your fellow Russian people. Let's look at the final piece. Tell us about that. And the final? Uh, it's called Triumph. Triumph, yes, it's called Triumph. This is like a triumph of the universe. Oh. Yes, uh, you see the uh, central part. Uh, this is a little, uh, little circle. Yeah. This is like a star. Okay. The uh, star which uh, burning now. Oh. The deliberate star. It's maybe very cosmic. Star. There's a cosmic really? meaning yes. here. I think. Yes. Yeah. This okay. is a space, uh -huh. space cosmic and uh, a little star and wow. all the universe around. Okay. This triumph of burning, uh, is it right? Birth, triumph of birth of new star. A birth of a birth new, of star. A new star. star. Yeah. Wow, oh my goodness. So we like to think about uh, artistic life as creativity, as giving birth to new ideas and new hopes, and you know, uh, the imagination is so powerful. You know, yeah. so this, the beauty of that work can inspire people about the beauty of their own lives and their own ability to create, and to create a better world that's more loving and kind and peaceful. Don't you think so? Yes, I think so. The, the, uh, uh, why I like uh, abstract impressionism? Yeah. All people. Which each person who see um, this work, yeah. uh, the person feels something uh, what inside this person, and uh, the person thinks about uh, his own his own uh, ima images, you know, and uh, the person has his own uh, sense his own sense of these painters yeah. and different people different persons different senses what about people who don't get abstract art there are a lot of people who think it's all nonsense it's all a bunch of baloney that anybody can do it you can just throw paint there anybody could do it what do you say to those critics those critics uh, I want to say uh, 
look uh, look carefully uh, look deeply to these works and try to feel it not only see okay. but feel it okay. Because color is in the world and the universe, when we look around us, we're surrounded by color. And is it true that if you, abstract art could make us more sensitive to the beauty of colors in our own lives? Yes, yes. That's, that's right. That's right. The colors of an autumn day, you know, when the yeah. trees are turning any color. Any colors, any uh -huh. senses. Colors of fabrics and fashions. and exactly. Colors in nature. Yeah. The sky is blue and the clouds are white and the clouds are gray. And and you, you must feel it. Yeah. You have to feel inside your soul. Where did you study art? I didn't study art at all. You did not study art. That's yes, interesting. I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Really? I'm oh a lawyer my God. in my past life. You're a lawyer. lawyer. In okay. Russia, I was lawyer 10 years. So if you want to fix a traffic ticket, you no, no. This is <laughs> but anyway, you are a lawyer. So that it, what this does, it, this gives hope to those people in our, in our audience, okay, who because they have to make a living, maybe they're working a job they don't like, maybe they've got a job in business, but they have something creative that they want to try. They want to go for their dreams. You are living proof, my friend, because you didn't study art. You were an autodidact. I bet you read a lot of books on your own. Is that true? Yes, I read books. Uh, I see films about oh. that. And okay. and the, the the main thing, yes. I uh, have a big uh, circle of people, of persons, oh. painters. Yeah. And uh, you learn from them, from being yeah. in a community yeah. of yeah. creative I'm a practice. people. I'm a practice person. <laughs> You're a practice. Person. Not theoretic. An apprentice. Practice. You're practical, not practical. theoretical. Okay. Yeah. Practical. But that's true. I think we learn from the people we're around, and I tell my students that too. I say, if you want to become smarter, hang around smart people. I do that all the time. I, hang, I try to hang around people smarter than me, or people that I could learn from, yeah. from a community. Like, I, I like to write. So I, I decided to hang around writers, and it helped me grow as a writer. So by being around creative people, we learn from the company we keep. Is that exactly. true? That's right. That's okay. true. That's true. We're going to head upstairs, because this is, I could talk to you all day, my friend. I want you to be our creative consultant, OK? Thank you. When we do panels on art, you are our expert now, OK? Andre, you are the best, OK, my friend? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank he you. represents two artists. Yes, indeed he does. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Okay. Thank Good you. luck. There's no more Cold War. You Thank can you. See that. Okay. I'd like to say a few words now. Nadia, from, where are you from, Nadia? I'm uh, from Russia, St. Petersburg. And uh, I think uh, the exhibition is incredible. And uh, one of my favorites is uh, Arts on Batik by Xusha and also by Elena Lesher. I think uh, this is very important to have uh, in uh, New York and in New Jersey, Russian Museum of Art. And I want to say special thank you to Margot Grant and the entire Russian community. Keep talking, keep talking. Uh, one of the most important thing is, is just a complete collaboration of art, but most important people. It's all about people who come to see the art. Otherwise, art would never exist. But it's Im very important to increase the creativity level of people. The entire world, it's all about creativity and expression. We're all here to create, and this art is actually would serve the inspiration for artists, for photographers, for writers, and for people who go to opera. <laughs> I'm talking about meetmedopera.com. And again, I want to say a big thank you to the entire Russian community, especially to Marga Grant, who organized uh, this wonderful museum and uh, non-stop functioning for exhibitions. And thank you for putting
put in the big input in the creativity in the entire world. Thank you. Okay, now we're here with Suavik. Suavik is one of the most enthusiastic artists I've ever met in my life. He's got so much passion for his work and for what he does. And I think it's amazing, sir. You, it is such an honor to have you. Welcome to the Public Voice Salon, Suavik. Really, thank you for compliments. I feel me strange because I don't know how to answer. You are. You, you, he, At least I'm very glad that I'm invited for this interview. When I met Suavik, he said, you've got to see my work. He was so happy to show us. He wants to share with the world his amazing images that he's captured, beginning here with the cemetery and a view of Manhattan. This is one the cemetery, which is on Queens. It's in Queens. One of the most beautiful cemetery I ever saw, I never, ever was in. Yeah. When I was living in Long Island, I always traveled to Manhattan just to work. Where in Long Island did you live? Uh, Stony Brook, Port Jefferson. Okay. My, my wife is a scientist and she worked. Your wife is a scientist? My wife is, says that. Yeah, well, my wife is a scientist too. Oh, How your wife to Alicia. We got the scientist here meeting. It's a scientific convention here. I am, I am not an artist. I am, I am a scientist. Okay. Yes. It's a good thing we have science. Yes, and one artist per family, that's enough, I think. And one scientist per family. Yes. Well, my scientist is my wife, Claudia, who's filming me right now. Okay. Say hi to Claudia. She's a scientist, but she's getting into the arts through our TV show. So have you gotten involved in art? For your husband? Uh, yes. Since last few years, I am helping him. I go with him to the exhibits. Sometimes I try to explain what what is this, and I think I got a good knowledge about this from him. So a creative couple. We work together. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing a few moments with us. Now we're going to go back to Suave. Okay. He might get mad if you you know you take too much. Okay. He knows more about his work than I do. Okay. But one day, one day we'll do a whole show on science and you and Claudia could be the experts on that and we'll be in the audience right we'll watch okay thank you very much okay now we go back to Suavik and now this is a very unique photo why is it unique I don't know why people did, do, don't want to see Manhattan through this beautiful cemetery it means it is the shortest history of this country through skyscrapers from Europe yeah. which came here which are on cemetery you see skyscrapers of our today time. But these skyscrapers are gone now, so this is, when, when was this photograph taken? Yeah. This was taken before 9-11. The yeah, yeah. title of this picture is Waiting for Godot. It is a famous play by Beckett. Somebody is waiting for something happened for two hours on the stage. It must be a very good actor. And in this country, unfortunately, we know what could happen. 9-11. Have you read Beckett? Have you read? I read. I even prepare the stage of this play. You did? Yeah, it's so fun. you worked in theater? Yeah, I did work for the theater. I did work for a movie too. What movie? I did have a chance to cooperate with... You, you were going to be in James Bond, I think. You were going to be better the original... Forget, better, for, better forget. You don't want to hear... I close this, I close this part of my part life. Part of your life. But you're a theatrical no, person. No, it's no, a beautiful in thing. Photography. Yeah. Yeah, but you represent yourself well. You stand up here, you speak well. There's so many people who have wonderful work to offer, but because they're shy, they're afraid to express themselves to the public. And you, you're not shy at all. I don't have much to do because you, I, I, cannot, I don't have any choice because you ask me. I have to answer. Yeah. This is why I'm talking. Yeah, but you, you chose to be on the show, right? It was an existential choice. It's beautiful because here are beautiful people, beautiful picture and fantastic atmosphere in this room. And I love, love really Museum Russian of, uh, Museum of Russian Art, which is one, to me, one of the best plays around Manhattan. So let's, we're going to say a few more closing comments about this particular piece because you're very, you're very excited about this, this photograph that you took of, a, of Manhattan, of the old World Trade Center through a cemetery. And cemeteries, obviously, they're very gloomy because you think of death, but death is a part of life. And, and a good dramatist, a good theater person, you know, portrays tragedies, which also can be very cathartic. Is that true? Yes. And it was our 9-11. This can understand this. And this is why I call this 
waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot. The idea of waiting for something that never happens, but then it happens. In this, in this country has happened. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Okay. Well, we want to create a world that's peaceful and loving so there's no more terrorism. And all these bad people, stop doing that. Stop doing what those bad things. We want love and peace. And art, I think, could bring that happiness of caring and have a better country, a better world through love and art and better economics and politics. Like, let's look at the next work. So, now, your work has to do with reflections. What is it about? Reflection. Tell us about reflections. One shot. Yeah. This is what I see in the window. I have to analyze with the camera and yeah. it is this. Like when you're walking down the street and you look in the car window, that's a parked car, and you'll see like a reflection of the sun or a tree or a person. Is that what you do? Is that what you talk about? Not particularly sun, but sometimes sun, sun works. Reflections in glass windows and store windows? Just in cars and in, in display windows. What about this reflection right here? This was somewhere in Europe. In Europe? Where, where in Europe? Doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't <laughs> it's not important. Matter. A European? Uh, yeah. I was waiting at bus stop okay. with a friend of mine who is here. Oh, that's your friend, the woman there. Yeah. Very beautiful and, woman. And suddenly I saw a poster which reflected in the window and I saw her face. And I decided to do it. And I titled this Midas Touch. Why? Midas was a hero from old Greece. Midas Touch. Yeah, yeah, okay. If he touched anything, it changed to gold. Ah. Our eye is ah. this Midas Touch. Okay. When eye is creative, when it sees, it creates to gold. Mm. This is my understanding of this photo. In a way, art can also do that. Art can ennoble and uplift and some situations that are difficult in life or confusing through, through the rendering of a novel or a poem or a painting. You can, you can create that golden attitude. Don't you think so? Is that, okay. Yes. So, so you're referencing Greek mythology here. Yeah. Did you read a lot of Greek mythology? Are you studying? Are you I have very humanistic education. I finished history. A humanistic education you have. Wonderful, wonderful. I work for the theater. I work for movie. I, I have more than 18 years of my life just passed. That's so beautiful. We love theater. <laughs> Almost 70. You have a lot of work to do, my friend. You, you have a lot. The best is yet to come. We have an artist named Frank Sinatra. Claudia and I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. That's where Frank Sinatra came from. You know, And Frank Sinatra had a song, The Best is Yet to Come. You know that song? Yes, this is why I'm glad yes. you came here okay. to show this. Let's see another reflection over here. This is about style. Okay. One friend of mine told me that we don't have the time to think about the style. Yeah. Now you see, this is a style. The problem in our society today, uh, Slavic, is that I think none of us have time to do what we really love, especially because the work week is so long. People are very exhausted and stressed, and so they don't have time. How did you create time in your life to create for what's important to you, for your art? How do you do that? I have here one picture which tell you how I create time. Okay, let's see it. Let's see, okay. This picture has a title, Old Jew. Old Jew. It's dedicated to a friend of mine who is a Holocaust uh, survivor. He lives now in San Francisco. He's over 19 years old. Okay. And what does say this picture? On the first plan, you see old Jew who is reading a book. Yeah. Jewish culture, religion is based on books. Literary, literary culture, yeah. You see still him. The Torah. Yeah. You almost don't see accordionist. Oh. You see, here is accordion. And yeah. here you see today. It means how the old culture disappears with the time. Oh, yeah. This is about the time. I have few pictures about the time. It's a serious, but this one This also. idea of nostalgia, this idea of memory, this idea of keeping alive the past. And I think the arts can do that very well. Your imagination can do this very well. Uh, <laughs> this is what is the most important. Uh, Art is this, if you see something, and if your, if your eye is caught by this, yes. then your imagination, imagination starts to work and you watch this. And one more image, because we're running out of time, sir. And this one behind us is you. Harlequin. Harlequin. Comedia dell'art. Comedia dell'art. It's my theater. Your theater is Comedia dell'art. And for our public who doesn't know about that, what is the Comedia dell'art? Very quickly. If you go to our streets, you see so many such a harlequins. In the streets, yeah. in the public square. You see. you see clowns, you see fools. Many of them. Everywhere. My gosh, this is beautiful. Go to the theater. The streets are like the theater, too. Yes. Here in Jersey City. Yes. 
and in, in New York and everywhere. I remember Jersey City about over 10 years ago. It wasn't the city which is now. Now it's a beautiful city. I'm the first time after more than 10 years. I left in 19th century. Anyway, well, thank you. Sir, thank you for being a part of our show and keep up your wonderful creative work. We love you for being on our show. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. We're with the wonderful Gregory Grigorovich, my good friend Gregory, and this whole show, ladies and gentlemen, would not have happened were not for Gregory. He is the curator of this show. Every piece that went in, this is the man who made it happen. Thank you, Gregory, for your artistic work and your, 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 your knowledge and your wisdom, sir. And tell us a little bit about what inspired you to curate this show and what are your thoughts about the reaction of the show so far? Well, I, I must say that I was very happy to curate the show and to hang the show. Uh, this show is international and uh, artists from different countries, uh, for example, from Turkey, from Korea, and of course, uh, Russian artists and from United States exhibit this work all together. About maybe uh, 10 artists participate in the show. and. Um, uh, the work is very talented artists, of very talented artists, and uh, it, uh, as usually, it takes some time to select work and to uh, organize show, to to get a theme and to get uh, to present artists in the best way possible because we can we can we can have uh, beautiful uh, artwork here in this uh, museum, and uh, I wish. I wish we have more international shows like this in the future as well. Thank you very much. Well, Greg, I want to just tell our audience how we met. Gregory and I met on the Jersey City art tour that happens every fall. And Claudia and I, we always love to go to your home. You have a beautiful, beautiful home in Jersey City. And it's just filled with artworks. One day we want to come to your house, fill a home hour with you, sir, because you are just such a wise, caring person. You're a wonderful teacher. And you have a spirit of creativity in art that just permeates through you, so you represent the art world and you're a link to Russia and that culture of classical art and aesthetics that we have to keep alive in this world. And we're so happy to have you with us, sir. And uh, thank you again for your incredible work. Okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. to stop by at uh, this wonderful exhibit and uh, I'm really fascinated I think I see lots of talents from Russian artists I really enjoy looking at these paintings they are so expressive so much light they evoke so much emotions in in me and I'm sure in everybody else I appreciate this exhibit and I just want to tell say thank you to everybody who worked on it and I hope we'll have more of it Okay, we're here with Alex, who is from Moscow, Russia, via Brooklyn, New York. Okay, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, 
We have two pieces by Alex behind us. We're going to look at the work first, then we're going to talk to Alex. This first one is a very radiant photograph of Manhattan, and you can see it has a sort of an electric look to it. It looks like it's at sunrise. There's a surreal quality, but there's a lot of energy and life in that photo. It's very interesting with the sky, a lot of energy. And the other is of the flat iron building, only the flat iron building in this photo is not very flat, but curved. We have a curved flat iron building. So it's the imagination, it's the surrealism. Alex, introduce yourself to our audience here. Hello. Uh, I'm Alex AJ. This is my photograph, as uh, you've seen. Uh, actually, those two works uh, represent a very good representation of what I do, because one of them is a compressed panorama. The actual image is actually uh, very long, about 10 feet long, compressed to the square. And uh, it is actually a sunset, not a sunrise. Sunset, OK. Yeah. But let me just educate our audience, OK, because people need to know what these terms are, right? You said a compressed panorama, a compressed panorama. OK. Yeah, uh, actually, I uh, do own copyright on this particular term. You have a copyright on that. This, this is the man who copyrighted the term compressed panorama. So a panorama is like a vista that you look at, and the, it goes like forever and ever. On a clear day, you can see forever. It was a Barbra Streisand song. But this is compressing it into a smaller space. What motivated you to want to do that? Well, uh, as you probably know, the uh, field of view we have is about this big, okay. pretty small. Okay. So it's virtually impossible to see something that large. You talk to our audience too, because oh, they're watching absolutely. you. Now, Alex. Have you been on TV before? Uh, actually, I did a few times. Okay, okay. But so uh, educate our public aesthetically. Now we have a great artist so, here. Uh, if you would uh, try to see how much you can see with your two eyes, that would be about this angle. So if you're trying to see that much, it's virtually impossible. You have to move your head. It's possible to imagine it, but to visually, physically see something like this is impossible. That's what compressed panorama do for you. John Berger wrote a book about the art of seeing, right? Something, art has a lot to do with the visual and what you see, what the eye sees. So uh, it's not just offering a different visual experience, it's offering a different point of view, because you can put several objects that are impossible to be seen at the same time in a space that would allow you to actually visualize them all together. Okay. Do I, I, I see a little Salvador Dali in there? Are you going to grow a mustache anytime soon? No, I'm not planning to do that. I would actually uh, find uh, Asher to be more of my inspiration. If you would who, look. Who? Uh, Asher. Asher. Yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, I'm actually really not sure how you spell it. Okay. But he's a great uh, surreal artist also? Uh, he is actually uh, an artist who was creating all those uh, spaces that shouldn't be existing in real life. Okay. I'm pretty sure you know his name if you think about it. Let's walk around because it's so great to have you out of Brooklyn here because we know how sophisticated Brooklyn has become and we're just little old Jersey City over here. That's all we are. But we got a Brooklyn guy in the house. Now we got Brooklyn credibility here, Brooklyn sophistication, you know, Williamsburg and all that, all that Actually, fancy schmancy. astonishing what's happening with New Jersey right now. New Jersey? Really? Hoboken, it's are we on the map yet? Are we on the map? Oh, definitely. All the way. Not just with Tony Soprano. I'm considering moving there. You know? To here. Yeah, to God bless. All the way. Thank you, sir, and thank you for being on our show and be a friend in the future. It is my pleasure. Always come back. Okay. Okay. Now we have Aslam from Turkey, Istanbul. Istanbul. She came all the way from Turkey to be here with us. She is an abstract artist who does mixed media. Tell us quickly about your work. Uh, okay, I have my inspiration from uh, personal things used and worn and uh, clothing items. Clothing items and uh, the beauty of these ordinary things that we use and the incidents, the feelings uh, they witnessed actually and uh, I'm a graphic designer at the same time and teaching at university as a professor at Yeditepe University in Istanbul. It's one of the best universities in Turkey. I just want to say, how do you like my sweaters? Oh, it's... <laughs> Is there a career in this sweater for art? Traditional graphic. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's take a look at the work now. Tell us quickly, because we only have about two minutes. We're wrapping up here at this wonderful exhibit at the 
Russian Museum of Art in Jersey City, New Jersey. International multicultural mix. This is a Saturday night, ice cold outside, warm and cozy inside. Glad you're with us here, Aslam. Thank you. Tell us about the work. Uh, as I said, um, my work is uh, about the feelings and the objects uh, which witness these feelings. And uh, clothing has feelings in it, right? Yeah, of course, because um, this is this is symbolic. The people who like wore them. For, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's it's kind of uh, they symbolize the people who wear it, their feelings, their daily lives, and. Uh -huh. um, Are these children's clothing here? No, no, uh, adult clothing okay. and um, blouses. We're looking at blouses, blouses and stockings. Pants. Yeah, pants. Okay. And, uh, so now, if you look at a closet that gets very cluttered, would you would you be the person to throw things out, or would you say, no, I can't throw this out because it has feelings in it? <laughs> no, I can't throw, you can't it, throw anything. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah, no, I hear it. It's, it's a tough choice. Claudia's been, you know, she wants me to clean out the closet because I have some things that I haven't worn since 1986. It's but the uh, beauty of ordinary things okay. we, we you know the yes. aesthetics of beautiful be, beautiful beauty and uh, yeah. daily things i say that art good art should show the magic in in the in the ordinary is yeah. that correct this this is not illustration so it doesn't have to it doesn't have to tell any story okay. it's it's all about it doesn't have to have a story right it's the feeling what about those socks over there those are very emotional socks right? yeah and uh it Who wore those socks oh uh, Did anybody wear those socks that yeah, you know? Of course, okay. of course, of course. I, I will tell the person. Is there a story behind it or you don't want to share it in public? I, I don't want to share in public, but okay. it has just got shortlisted in uh, London International Creative Competition Ooh. last week. Uh, okay. It was uh, once and for all series. It, it was a series for five paintings. Uh, that's that's wonderful. We got a famous artist in our midst <laughs> from Istanbul, Turkey. Thank you for joining us on Public Voice Salon. Tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Perfect, Elena. We're with Elena now and her beautiful work called Points of Reflection. And Elena, where are you from? I'm from Ukraine, but I came to America 26 years ago. 26 years ago? What made you want to come to America? Um, I came like a refugee from Soviet Union. Oh. It was the same Ukraine and Russia, Soviet Union. Okay. Yes, and then I came like refugee. And you studied art in Russia? Yes, I study art in art college in Kiev. Yes, and I'm working and painting all my life and uh, enjoy it. Are you living in Jersey now or New York? Uh, no, I live in New Jersey. I live in Bochang. Goshen? Bochang. Bochang. Wachong, yes. We know like the Wachong Mountains. Yes. We live in the Wachong Mountains. Yes. Now, we're looking, your work is behind us, points of reflection. We like to think of our show as being reflective in the sense that we can reflect on culture, on the arts, and reflect on you know, learning and yeah. things like that, and yeah. also politics in the world and how to make a better world. What were some of the things that, when people look at your work, do you want them to reflect on things? Or uh, how does the, where did the title come from, Points of Reflection? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, this is abstract work. I have a lot of work not abstract. When I, um, when I uh, paint this work, I think about uh, some political statement or some public statement or some, but this work is more like emotional work, okay, okay. you know. Who are some of your inspirations? Jackson Pollock maybe? Or? Jackson Pollock? Um, I can say it's Jackson, no. Who, 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 who are some of the ones? <laughs> who is, you know, I have a lot of drawing and uh, my God is Picasso. <laughs> Picasso, ah, Picasso, I see, okay. But this work is yes. not uh, uh -huh. like Picasso. No, but it's your own unique style. It's, it's my style and yes. my, my reflection. Your reflection. My reflection. Well, let's all reflect on that now as we look at this beautiful art and we're so grateful to have you on our show today. Thank you and keep much. up the wonderful work. If we had more time, we could have a deeper dialogue and reflect more. Okay. Let's hope that this is the beginning of a conversation. And if you ever want to come back on our show and you have new 
work, you let us know, okay? Of course. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Margot, right? Margot? Margo. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Margot, <laughs> if it was not for Margot, I happened to call. Here's how it happened. I said to Claudia, we have to film a show today. I went online, the computer. I said, what, what's around? What's interesting? What's happening? I had been to a couple shows here in the past, so I Googled the Russian Museum. I called you up, and you were so friendly on the phone. You were so kind. You were so like, come on and film the Thank show. Thank you for coming. Thank Margo, you. Your spirit. Everybody happy that you came in oh. and do this beautiful job. Uh, you, Thank uh, you. And all the artists are so happy. Talk to our audience, Margo. We want people to get to know you now. Where are you from, Margo, originally? Originally from St. Petersburg, Russia. Oh. <laughs> when did you come to the United States? Ooh, long time ago, in 1976. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's something very theatrical about you. Is that true? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Were you in theater? Uh, I wish. <laughs> but you have a presence about you. You have a magnetic personality. People gravitate around you. You seem to be the person who makes it happen. I love it. Thank you. You're Could fantastic. You talk about this show tonight. We're in Jersey City, New Jersey. Jersey City, New Jersey. This is winners of international art competition. Right. We had this show before, October 9, in Chelsea. In Chelsea, okay. In Chelsea. That's the art capital of the world, Chelsea. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we had 100, 100 pieces on the wall. In Chelsea. 100 okay. artists, 100 pieces. Yeah. And from all these... All over the world. All over the world. We picked up seven the best okay. artists. Okay. Seven the best artists. So the winners are here tonight. The winners is here today from all over the world. We have one girl, this fantastic, from Turkey. Uh -huh. We have one Korean girl. Yeah. We have from Poland. Okay. We have from uh, whatever. Uh, from Canada. We have from Canada. Okay. And we have few Russian beautiful artist. My goodness gracious. And this is fantastic. And you are the director of this museum. And I'm a director of this museum. Now, I, I've never seen so many people here before. I think that finally Jersey City is having its moment in the sun. No, we always have a lot of people. We always, doing this show, we always have a lot of people coming over from all over, from Brooklyn, from New Jersey, okay. from Bronx, from, okay. you, may, you name it. So you're the kind of person who brings people together and you, I think you have a way of creating community. How do you do that? How do you make community happen? Oh, this is, I don't know. This Everybody knows me and I know everybody. Oh <laughs> everybody knows. Yes, you talk to people, you're very friendly. I talk to people, I go to a lot of shows. You're not stuck up. No, I'm going to a lot of shows, yes. art shows everywhere. I meet people, I have one, one 15,000 emails. My God, and how I'm do you get through your emails? And I'm Look. sending it out. I said, it's a show going on, so everybody this can. Is open hearted, she's sweet, she's kind, but she's a very bright person because she coordinated this show. And we want to thank you for being on our program and God bless you. And thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.